Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mandy. Yes. Okay. So uh, let's pray together, uh, and then we can go forward. Uh, just want to check, Simran. Uh, are you able to pray? Are you comfortable to pray? Okay, I'm not sure. Uh, Simran. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Prabhakar? Prabhakar? Yes, Pastor. Okay, Me yeah. or Prabhakar? Or yeah, either, either one of you. Both of you are Prabhakar, so. <laughs> okay. No, no problem. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> I should have specified Prabhakar from uh, which place of it. No, it's okay, Pastor. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah. Go, go ahead. Please. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Um, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise Lord, praise Lord, praise Lord. Our dear Heavenly Father, we praise you. We acknowledge your holy name. We adore, adore you, excel your holy name, Father. At this moment, we come to your throne of grace, Father. Uh, we are about to start this new class, Father. Bless each and everyone. Let your Holy Spirit lead us uh, to which uh, whatever you want to teach us, Lord, let us learn in that way. And uh, Father, uh, uh, bless Pastor Nancy also, so that we all can um, learn the way you want to teach us, Father. Uh, bless each and every moment of this two hours class and let it be productive. One, I, I dedicate each and every member of this classroom to your throne of grace. Uh, bless them, bestow them with your uh, grand knowledge and wisdom. Uh, I ask this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Prabhakar, for leading us. So uh, we have been studying from the APC publication called uh, Kingdom Builders. Uh, and last class, we touched upon the Holy Spirit being the director. So the essence of what we are saying is uh, that, you know, kingdom building is about doing the will of the Father. We could be doing many things, but uh, it does not necessarily um, serve the purposes of God directly. Okay, so uh, we could pick anything that we want to do and just tag it as God's will and get going with that. But uh, the, the fruit will come, the lasting results will come only when we are directed by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who directs us in the will of the Father. And then we saw how the works of the flesh, you know, things that we may want to do out of wrong motivation. So works of the flesh would include... Um, Things like uh, jealousy, anger, bitterness, covetousness, um, you know, sexual immorality. There are so many works of the flesh. Now, if any of those are the motivation for us, uh, you know, pride, uh, selfish ambition. So if any of these are our motivation to do the work of God, then obviously, you know, God is not going to bless it or God is not going to anoint it. It's only the work of the spirit. Uh, that will be anointed. So we must be very careful about not giving birth to the uh, the the works of the flesh. Now we we also said that when we do give birth to the works of the flesh, then uh, that is what causes a lot of problems in our lives. Not necessarily the enemy trying to uh, attack us, but uh, many times you know we we looked at uh, the life of Abraham and said that the the challenges that uh, Isaac faced was because of Ishmael, the work of the flesh, uh, as compared to the work of the spirit. So. Uh, when does this happen? When we're not following the will of God. We have to follow the uh, the work of the Spirit in our lives. And then we, we saw how the Holy Spirit really directs us into the Father's will. From the book of Acts, there were so many examples of how the Holy Spirit led the early apostles. We, uh, you know, the way Philip was led. We, we saw that, you know, sometimes God may just put a, a very small impression on our hearts. In the case of uh, Philip, it was you know, like a short sentence that came into his spirit, go near and overtake this chariot. And when he followed that, you know, he could minister to the Ethiopian eunuch who was the open door to the continent of Africa. So you know, mighty things uh, happen when we obey the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and in our consideration, they could be very insignificant promptings. But in God's uh, eyes, 
our obedience can work you know wonders for the extension of his kingdom and then we also saw the example of uh, peter when god tells him to get up and go with the men who come to uh, you know take him some place and basically the gospel was going to be preached to a gentile family cornelius and his family uh, and they accept christ and they are filled with the holy spirit so that's like the gospel going to the community of the gentiles but how did all this happen when people followed the instructions of the holy spirit so what are we saying we're saying when we are building the kingdom of god uh, this is not a kingdom which can be built with our own natural planning and strategizing and you know research and understanding and knowledge and all of that but the kingdom of god has to be built with kingdom resources so uh, the kingdom of god we need to be directed by the holy spirit in the way that he wants us to go that's when we will give birth to the work of the spirit it will be anointed it will be a blessing uh, to the people and we know that whatever work the holy spirit does we ask those questions right like how do we know that the something is the work of the spirit uh, we know by answering the questions who does this glorify if it is glorifying the name of jesus then we know that the holy spirit is giving birth to the uh, the purpose or the cause and the other question that we have to answer is what is my motivation if our motivation is based in love then yes again we can validate and say that god is leading us in this direction so these are some key things that we learned in the uh last class uh, and also we touched upon how the holy spirit communicates with us now this cannot be com- uh, covered in an exhaustive manner uh, in this session uh, there'll be an entire course on this understanding the prophetic so if you are interested you can go read that apc publication uh, uh and also you know from time to time we have the weekend schools um, that are run here in bangalore so those of us who are in bangalore and it's open to all churches so if you have the time uh, you can join us for a weekend school where we uh, talk about how the holy spirit communicates uh, uh, and uh, you know how we can flow uh, in in the gifts of the holy spirit uh, especially uh, the prophetic so you know that will be that will be a good training it will be um you know, broken down uh you know at at a uh, in a way that even those who have never uh, learned on this subject can pick up things and we also generally have practice sessions where uh you know we can flow in the prophetic and understand how the holy spirit communicates with us so if you are around when these weekend schools happen and i'm uh, just uh, hoping next year you know these uh, covid restrictions will be completely lifted and we should be able to do them uh, so please do join it okay so some things that were listed about the promptings of the holy spirit where the quickening of the word of god uh, still a uh, small in a voice uh, we said a flash of information can come into our spirit a knowing on the inside can come into our spirit god can lead us through the peace uh, that fills our hearts we could also receive this communication of ideas um yeah you know in uh, you could just have a thought or there can be a picture that you receive uh, in your heart uh, there can be a prophetic word which is spoken over us and that prophetic word reveals what god wants to do through us or we can have dreams and visions dreams and visions uh, the last uh, supernatural hour i remember pastor uh, asked all of us if you have any if you've had any dreams recently and the holy spirit is speaking to you uh do share it with the with the rest of us so god speaks through dreams he speaks through visions uh that also is the direction of the holy spirit there can also be physical manifestations okay of uh, uh god's presence so you know these are all ways in which uh god communicates it's i mean extremely exciting i feel like going into examples but i just have to hold back uh, and uh, you know stick to the subject here uh so yes when we uh, establish an unbreakable communion with the holy spirit he communicates in all these ways and he shows us you know uh what direction we should move in so now we're specifically talking about kingdom building so let's say as a pastor or um uh, some of you could be 
in the apostolic calling or some of you could be in the teaching calling okay and now not just that we have the uh, fivefold ministry offices uh, but we we know that you know there are other gifts as well i think romans 12 uh, covers that these are the the grace gifts that god gives us so we could be in administration we could be um, you know in the area of leadership uh, we could um, uh, be in the area of helps so there are you know different kinds of services that that we can be engaged in which is also from the lord so uh, wherever we are you know we can we can really uh, be directed by the spirit of god and the spirit of god can uh, guide us you know how how should we do something or is this the right time for me to to step out and uh, you know serve in a certain manner the holy spirit can guide every single one of us whether it is the office gifts whether it is the grace gifts or you know whatever else uh, we are engaging in so for kingdom building this is the bottom line of what we are discussing since the last session be led by the holy spirit if we are not led by the holy spirit you know it it's like we can serve but that may not be uh, the cutting edge of what god wants to do in us and through us okay so the quest of our hearts must always be like god what is it that you want me to do and what is it that you want me to do now go by that the holy spirit will show us in all these ways you know impression peace uh, prophecy so many ways so we pick that up and we move in that direction and that becomes a, a fulfilling way in which we are building the kingdom of god and let's not forget you know kingdom building is about co-laboring with god you know we've said that in the very first chapter we said that we must honor the king it's about serving him uh, uh, and you know it's about working together with him so that is why the holy spirit as the director is so important otherwise we are directing things we are taking things you know in our own hands but that's not kingdom building kingdom building has to do with serving the purposes of god so we are but co laborers yes we walk in incredible dominion authority you know we walk in victory but we must never forget that there is a king to whom we are subject and then we said that you know life of surrender brokenness so dependence on god is what makes the kingdom building very very effective okay so now that we are discussing about um, serving the purposes of god we will we will you know touch on some other key aspects today uh, so it's important to know what god wants us to do but it's also important to discern the spirit's timing so remember we uh, i think we we discussed this we said that uh, at the time when uh, paul wanted to go into asia okay and bithynia god did not allow him the holy spirit restrained him and said no now you have to go to macedonia so it's also about the timing of god so we hear what god wants us to do and do it at the right time so one of the ways in which we can uh, become we can become very sensitive to hearing from the holy spirit is to uh, pray in the spirit and we have discussed this in uh, the prayer and intercession uh, class where we said that when we pray in the holy spirit now what really happens is the revelation of god is imparted into our spirit now uh, yes the bible says you know first uh, corinthians 14 2 that when we pray in the spirit we speak mysteries unto god it bypasses our understanding but something is going on within our spirit which can be revealed to us again by the holy spirit so first corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 through 10 and 16 uh, they tell us you know that these things which are too good to be true you know, no eye has seen no ear has heard no mind has conceived the things that god has prepared for those who love him so these are these are mysterious things which are in the heart of god for us good things for us but we don't have to live our lives thinking uh, i have no access to what god wants me to do like i can't know it i just have to uh, go you know one day at a time and uh, uh, you know yeah i can't know god's plan for my life so the bible clearly says that yes there are beautiful things hidden things in god but the spirit of god has revealed it to us 
So when I engage in praying in the spirit, what happens in a way, I'm inviting the Holy Spirit to come and impart that into my spirit. And the Holy Spirit is also able to help me understand what is being imparted, right? Now, obviously, uh, because we are, we know that tongues is uh, um, uh, like, a, it's a language that our mind cannot understand. We may not know everything of what we are speaking and God may not think that it's necessary for us to know everything, but whatever we need to know, the Holy Spirit can definitely uh, bring it to our understanding. So, uh, <coughs> Excuse me. When we are building the kingdom of God, this is a very useful um, practice that we can engage in, even on a daily basis, constantly take time to pray in the spirit, you know, spend time praying in tongues and just stir yourself up in the spirit. So that way uh, we will be uh, led in the direction where the Holy Spirit wants us to go. So praying in the spirit aligns us to God's will for our lives and there are you know a couple of uh, uh, scriptures given there how the holy spirit helps us in our weaknesses uh, and uh, uh, you know how uh, he prays through us when we pray in the spirit so uh, yeah it's it's a very important practice for a kingdom builder now moving on to the next section here so all this was kind of touching on what we had uh, discussed last class now moving on to the next section which is understanding the work of the spirit uh, from the birth of jesus okay and pastor has titled this the mary miracle the Mary miracle. And one interesting fact about this, uh, um, uh, I don't know what to call it, but uh, section, because uh, apparently he preached this on a Sunday, uh, on a Christmas, you know, Sunday. Uh, and, uh, okay, Christmas day. He preached it on a Christmas day. And the uh, pastor had shared how this sermon came about. Okay, so uh, he said that generally he's very well prepared. For the sermons you know he writes it out thoroughly elaborately uh, with many details but for whatever reason on this christmas morning he had not been able to write down the sermon so he was praying about it and he kind of did not get uh, confirmation in his spirit as to what he must preach so it was a very unusual christmas day so he went and this was back when you know you did not need uh, to let the the worship team know and uh, the media team know what subject they were to preach on because they have to come up with graphics and all of that. But, you know, at that time, I think he could just go and deliver the message. So uh, he had not told anybody what the topic would be. And then, uh, you know, he shared how he was sitting on his chair and thinking, oh, goodness, worship is ending. I don't know the title of my sermon. Okay. And then he, he shared that when he went from the chair to the pulpit, something happened in between. Right. It was remember we were talking about the promptings of the Holy Spirit and how the knowledge of the Lord. Uh, when we study about the prophetic, we'll see, you know, Balaam, he says that I received the knowledge of the Lord. So it was like a heavenly download. It was as if the message just came into his spirit, like in a few seconds. And he walked up to the pulpit and he shared this message. After he shared the message, he came back and took notes. Right. And that's how it is there in our um uh, you know, publication here today because this was something that he kind of received like in, in moments uh, and I mean, I don't know how else to explain that but something like the not received the knowledge of the Lord and he titled the message as the Mary Miracle, okay? All right, so what can we learn from the, uh, the birth of Jesus? What can we learn about kingdom building from the incarnation uh, of the, the Lord Jesus. So basically, the Son of God left behind his heavenly glory and he became a human being, fully man. And um, this happened through uh, the life of a willing virgin young woman called Mary. So the Mary miracle teaches us several things about releasing the work of God, releasing the kingdom work of God through human vessels. Uh, and that's what we will understand and learn from this. So one key lesson that we learn is that the work of the spirit is released into the earth at the appointed time. Uh, now, 
in the book of genesis we know that god promised uh, that there will be uh, the seed of the woman that will crush the head of the serpent this is in genesis 3:15 so god had promised redemption god had promised victory over the devil he had promised a uh, victory conquest over satan early on in the book of genesis but it wasn't until 4000 years no uh, or 4000 years later jesus christ was born okay he he was born through mary so what do we understand from this okay let me read uh, um a uh, scripture here this is galatians 4:4 it says but when the fullness of the time had come god sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law so in the fullness of time you know god releases the intended work or the promised work so even in our lives right god can speak and he can reveal many things and say this is what i'm going to do in your life or in your family or in your nation or you know it could concern your church any anything it could concern different um uh, spheres that we are engaged in but there is a timing associated with it now just because the promise of god has been released it doesn't mean that it is going to come to pass tomorrow we have to wait upon the lord and in the case of the birth of jesus prophesied 4000 years prior god had already promised it but it was in the fullness of time that the son of god was made manifest so this is something we understand this is how god releases his work his intention comes earlier the knowledge of his intention comes earlier and then comes the actual release of the work of god so the fullness of time is uh, is something that we must um, remember that god will do it in the fullness of his time okay what else can we see from uh, the birth of jesus the work of the spirit is released through ordinary people so now we know there are you know hundreds of messianic prophecies in the old uh, testament uh, one of which is isaiah 7:14 where we see that um, you know the lord promised the lord himself will give you a sign behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name immanuel okay it's unheard of a virgin shall conceive that's why it's a sign because that's that's not the norm in the world so when god wants to release his purpose in the case of mary jesus the birth of jesus was the purpose that she was going to release now just think about this you know god could have chosen uh i don't know maybe a princess or maybe um you know somebody who was very well accomplished like a debra or someone you know she's she's a leader and uh, you know like an army commander somebody who's accomplished or he could have chosen uh, a mother of uh, uh, i don't know maybe four children or five children because that woman would probably have a better experience of raising the son of god but based on the messianic prophecy that god had already spoken and said there is going to be a sign a virgin shall conceive a young woman a very inexperienced woman okay by the name of mary was chosen and she was a virgin and we're thinking god you're taking a very big risk why would you want an ordinary individual to give birth to the son of god Now, what if she doesn't carry the baby properly, or you know, what if she doesn't take care of herself during the pregnancy? You know, there are lots of risks involved. But God is not afraid of entrusting His dream, His purpose to ordinary people. Okay, and in this case, He chose Mary, and that gives us a lot of encouragement today. You know, we might look at ourselves and say, "Oh." so ordinary what can i do for god or you know there is so many of us in the in the uh, in the body of christ we think god can't do anything through my life but that's not how god works you know god works through seemingly ordinary 
people to release great and mighty works of god and the beauty about mary was that she was obedient you know the moment the promise came to her uh, in luke 138 you know she says behold the maid servant of the lord let it be to me according to your word okay in other translation according to your will so she was just an obedient person though not experienced but god was happy and you know uh, she was blessed and god affirmed gave her the assurance and said blessed is she who believed for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the lord so god blessed her because of her obedience and her willingness to release the work of god in the world so you know, that is the way in which god works he works through ordinary people to release extraordinary things okay so here is the next lesson that we learn from the birth of jesus uh the work of the spirit must be unadulterated or born purely of his spirit so you know in the case of uh, uh mary uh, it, it was quite clear how was jesus conceived in her womb by being overshadowed by the holy spirit it was you know that there was nothing additional to explain the birth of jesus so in the same way in our lives you know when we yield to the spirit we allow the holy spirit to work being overshadowed by the holy spirit we are able to release the works of the kingdom now this is where you know our personal walk with the lord comes into picture this is where you know our time in the word our obedience to god our surrender and our submission to the king in our lives uh, you know uh, uh, our uh, communion with the holy spirit so many things uh, we discussed about incubation earlier okay so you know how does that incubation happen unless we are we we are completely being immersed in god in his word in his spirit so when we live a life like that uh, it's it's like what mary was able to produce overshadowed by the holy spirit jesus was conceived in her so overshadowed by the holy spirit you know, overshadowed by the by the work of the word in our lives you know, we bring forth something we release something you know we call it ministry okay uh, uh, but that has to be by the spirit unadulterated without it must not be uh, you know again we we term it and say the work of the flesh so no work of the flesh unadulterated pure work of the spirit and that is the kind of a uh, work that really blesses the world uh, and, and and you know that's a lesson we learn that we must release uh, the work that is released by the work of the spirit in our lives okay so we're coming to the next lesson that we learn from the birth of jesus uh, and this is you know when when uh, mary said okay be it unto me according to your will she gave it to god's purpose for her life uh, and i don't know what she thought she must have thought oh wow now god has celebrated me and said you know the angel said oh highly favored of the lord and she must have rejoiced over uh, what what has happened the experience she had the promise that came to her but little did she know that the world will not be ready to accept a virgin who is pregnant okay and at that point we also know that she was betrothed to joseph so the work of god which was conceived in her became a matter of embarrassment now we really don't know all that she went through she must have thought people are also going to call me highly favored of the lord but was that the case i don't think so you know in an orthodox uh, uh, sort of a strict uh, jewish culture she must have ha had insults she must have heard Uh, you know people calling her names people must have blamed her uh, and what about joseph you know, matthew 119 it says then joseph her husband being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example was uh, minded to put her away secretly so even the person that she was to be married to initially what were his thoughts he could not receive the work that god was going to go do through mary obviously mary would have been embarrassed herself to carry a child uh, you know carry a, a, a like you know a, a, a baby uh, without being married and here is joseph who's thinking 
this is an embarrassment you know how can i trust this woman okay being a just man thankfully he says okay let me do this secretly i'll just put her away quietly but you know uh, what god does is even though you know, the work of god sometimes can can bring a lot of um, i don't know confusion shame misunderstanding in our relationships maybe discouragement because people don't understand we understand this is what god wants me to do so you know i i am doing this but people may not understand but you know thank god that you know god is faithful uh the the inner circle of mary in a way though joseph decided on that we you know god spoke to joseph as well and said don't put her away okay so god communicated that to joseph so he was in full knowledge about the work of god and he was willing to support mary in what god was going to release through her and uh, we also know her own um, cousin elizabeth she was filled with the holy spirit and she speaks right she speaks to mary when when uh, they meet so god is faithful in that sense the people who are uh, important in our lives the ones who need to uh, stand with us for us to do the work of god so god will communicate with them and god will put it on their hearts as well so doesn't matter you know if you don't have the larger crowd supporting you but it's very important to have a uh, good people encouraging people people who trust in the vision the the dream that god has put in our hearts surrounding us and god is faithful to do that you know we will at least have our inner circle who will understand that hey this is not an embarrassment the world cannot understand but god is going to release a great work through this particular individual or you know god is going to release a great work through our family so uh, that is the next lesson that we learn so the work of the spirit might be a cause of embarrassment but god is faithful to help us navigate through it and we must not let the no of the world you know the naysayers of the world to to break our spirit so mary that way uh, we must really appreciate her we don't know what she went through but she didn't give up she came to full term and actually delivered the uh, christ child so do uh, uh, do we have that kind of an endurance to hold on and to release the work of god no matter what okay so moving on to the next lesson here the work of the spirit is released through normal natural processes okay uh, so when you uh, try to understand in the case of mary you know, we would think wow uh, jesus is being born the angels came and you know, later on when jesus was born they came they sang you know multitude of angels so this is a grand event this is this is a grand i don't know what term to use it like global is a small 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 word there you know heaven and earth uh, are concerned in this matter so it's a it's an incredible event that is taking place and then you know we might think okay god now that you are sending your son jesus who is so special how could you make it like a a sign or a wonder okay first of all the virgin is is conceiving that it's a that is a sign now uh, what if you know mary mary conceives by the power of the holy spirit on day 1 you know she reaches full term on day 2 and then the baby is born on day 3 you know wouldn't that go into uh, uh, the archives of history that here is a woman who uh who who was pregnant and delivered all in 3 days okay all in 3 days and people will know that god is engaged in this amazing delivery okay of the christ child but just take a look at how it happened it was a normal process it was a normal earthly human process so uh mary conceived by the power of the holy spirit and then what so she had like every other woman Nine months of carrying the child, and then the census happened, and they had to travel on a donkey and find a place, and then she actually delivered the baby. So nothing special about the process that God followed to re- to bring His own Son to the earth. And we might think, God, what is this? You're releasing the work of the Spirit. Why can't it be a supernatural process? But no, God uses. natural processes so uh what is our understanding from this you know paul in his ministry he says uh, 1 corinthians 15 10 paul says but by the grace of god i am what i am and his grace toward me was not in vain but 
I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So, you know, Paul understood this. This. Uh, e yep. Sorry, everyone. I don't know what happened. I just got disconnected, but that's okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll just come back to what I was saying. So I was saying that Apostle Paul also understood, uh, that natural processes need to be followed for us to release the work of the spirit. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Can you, can you all hear me now? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Sure. So we'll continue. I think someone's uh, mic is not muted. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. So here's the next uh, lesson for us. Uh, we might encounter closed doors until we reach God's appointed place. So again, you know, so interesting. Just think about this. The savior of the world is being born and the son of God is coming to the earth. It could have been like, you know, God chose the best airline and it was a smooth landing with, uh, you know, people standing all around and clapping and inviting the son of God. You know, Mary could have had that kind of a delivery. But in reality, what happened? You know, the census uh, was announced and they had to go you know to to their town and over there they are going from in to in and knocking and asking you know is that is that a place is that a place is that a place and there was no place and we're thinking wow god what is this you know you're the best organizer you manage the sun and the moon and you know the names of the stars why couldn't there be a a, a nice place for for your son to be born why wasn't there an arrangement made before in the end there was no place available and uh, uh, joseph had to pick you know uh, a manger right and that was the place where jesus was born so what do we learn from this you know what it is the purpose of god that we are carrying in our hearts it is the dream that god has put in our hearts but in the journey it's possible that we experience no closed door, disappointment, discouragement, right? Uh, and we don't know what Mary and Joseph went through. They must have thought, did we hear God wrong? What's going on? You know, uh, it, it wasn't it God's idea that we carry this baby. And here's God. He has not given us a place also for the baby to be born. I don't know. I really don't know what kind of uh, thoughts went through their minds. Finally, they found a cattle shed. Obviously, it was not the best place, right? Uh, but it was the right place. It was the right place for the birth of the little baby. And uh, God directed them. 
after many closed doors to the right place where the child would be born now why did god do this god does not do anything without purpose okay so we know that there is a reason why god did these things as we think through this as we meditate on this we can we can really understand the heart of god you know the king of the world the lord of lords the king of kings was born in such humility it really teaches us he did not expect the grand entrance he came to serve the world right he came to save the that which was lost and the way he chose to enter the world though he is the owner of the world is in such a humble way in a manger and it shows the humility in the life of jesus for us now again philippians 2 it says he left behind his heavenly glory he humbled himself okay and the manger is is a picture of that the humility that christ jesus carried uh, and and god was trying to reveal that to us now mary and joseph i don't know whether they understood all these things but they were obedient when the doors were shut they were not discouraged they knocked till they found the manger and finally the lord jesus was birthed in the manger now what happens if we get all um Mm, you know worked up in the flesh and we say no why is the work of god delaying i will make it happen you know so this make it happen is very dangerous that's what abraham did and that's how ishmael was born so we have to go with the flow of the spirit yes we can have closed doors but don't try to make the doors open in god's timing according to god's purpose the right door will open the right place will be prepared and that's the place to give birth to the promise and the purpose of god okay let me just quickly uh cover you know a few more points here mm, okay so the next insight that we get is uh, the work of the spirit often has a simple humble beginning so the way we saw jesus was born uh, in a uh, not in a, a rich home or a palace or a you know like a deluxe luxury um, uh, retreat center or hotel or something like that no but he was born in a small place right in bethlehem he was born uh, in the lowliest of all places in fact a cattle shed uh, and we think we can look at that and say what is his beginning to the the savior entering the world sometimes the the work of god in our lives also may look like that god has put a dream in our hearts and then when we are starting out maybe a church planting you started your day one of church planting you put flyers newspaper everywhere people know about it facebook advertisement whatsapp everything and you're starting your church okay that day 9 9 am worship starts uh, maybe two singers are there they sing right and uh, you start the service then you open your eyes to start ministering there are there are only three people in front of you maybe your family member and the two worship leaders and you're thinking god nobody came to the launch service of this church what is happening humble beginning humble beginning but we must not discredit the work of god when we see humble beginnings because that's what god's word says that you no know, do not despise the day of small beginnings zechariah 4:10 and of course we know God says it's not by might nor by power but by the holy spirit god will cause all things to take place okay so here is the next uh, lesson uh, the last lesson here in our notes uh, from the mary miracle what we see in the way the lord jesus was born and um, he he uh, developed or grew is that he also did not uh shortcut the process so we we read in the scripture that the child grew in wisdom stature favor with man favor with god so the natural process was followed and during that process what about mary and joseph how did they take care of jesus they took care of him like any other normal child what if they did not take good care of jesus if they didn't protect him if they uh, you know neglected him and all of that we, like from what we understand he grew pretty okay he grew fine and then you know he uh, was serving as a carpenter so mary and joseph nurtured the work of god you know once you give birth to the work of god that's not the end that's the beginning and then comes into play you know our nurturing our protecting our taking care of the 
work of God. Uh, and we must be faithful to do that and don't give up on the work of God till we have done what God has asked us to do, bring it to completion. You know, there was a time when um, Joseph could have made the wrong move. Right? He, he, uh, God warned him in a dream and said, look, Herod is after uh, children of this age and Jesus might die if you're, if you're here. So you take this route and, and get out of here. So God warned him in a dream and Joseph was careful to preserve the work of God. So, you know, this is also something we must recognize. We release the work, but it's not the end. That's just the beginning. We have to continue with it, fulfill God's purpose for our lives uh, and, and you know protect, nurture, cause God's work to grow. And that is also a responsibility which we carry. So that is the last um, insight here from the Mary miracle. And I, I'm going to pause. Um, uh, I, I hope uh, you know it was a blessing because every time I, I read it, every time I hear it, that freshness uh, you know, is, is always there uh, in these insights. And um, uh, I'm sure, you know, pastor received it from heaven. Uh, any any um, thoughts, uh, class, any comments, additional comments, questions, we could take that up before we move on to the next section. So yeah, feel free. And I, I lost the chat uh, because I got disconnected. So if there were any questions on the chat earlier, please do post it again. Oh, ma'am, can I say? Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, Anita. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, it's uh, really like a wonders. Uh, <coughs> like we cannot understand God's ways, actually. Um, yeah. <coughs> today also in the uh, middle of the pandemic, if we have to sit, uh, see the situation of Afghan church and uh, so many things are happening uh, with the believers also. So maybe I'm thinking the way for Jesus what happened and with Mary what happened so it won't be a surprise like what is happening right now with the church also little bit of a connection I could feel yeah yeah Anita thank you thank you for sharing that I know um, you know the way we said right closed doors are not really closed doors so we just trust God to open the right door at the right time mm. Sure, wonderful. Uh, anything else? Any other thoughts, insights? Okay, long silence always makes me wonder if I'm connected or I got disconnected from the call. Okay, you're all still here. <laughs> connected, okay, thank you everyone. Okay, Prabhakar K, uh, we shouldn't force open the doors. Okay, that is closed. All right, yeah. So that's something new for him. Mm, okay, Samuel says lots of downloads sinking in. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, good, good. Yes, okay, Susan. Uh, yes, Susan, please go ahead. Uh, okay. I think you have a question. Have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you said uh, God will open the door at his right time. So what about couples who go for test tube baby? They should also wait <laughs> for right time. Or is it right? Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. So, see, Susan, uh, what I would say is, like, you gave one example, okay, of something that is not happening. There is a delay in this uh, case. And the uh, people are making an effort. Okay. So, what I would say is, based on the promise of God, I don't think it is wrong to attempt. What is wrong is, doing it out of fleshly motives and doing it knowing that it's not God's will. Okay, so if they already have a promise, 
that they are going to have a child and for whatever reason right they uh, they they've had all these delays and now the um the option that that god seems to be showing them is to go in for you know ivf uh, or something i don't see anything wrong with that and i don't think that means pushing open the door they're very much in the will of god i don't think there's anything wrong with it yeah uh, there can be opposing <laughs> ideas i know among the group uh, is that okay susan or you differ, oh, you differ. <laughs> yes, yes but i was feeling like uh, uh, it is not a natural way what uh, god wants to give at right time oh, yeah. But now my doubt is clear. Okay, thank you, thank you, Susan. Uh, do think about it. See, because uh, see, I I do understand. We as believers, we want things to happen like in a supernatural way. The the way you know Abraham and Sarah, they were so old and they gave birth to a a, a miracle child. Now, in the world that we live in. right I, i'm just taking into account like even healing we want it to happen as a one off thing uh, but isn't it god who has also given us the knowledge and the wisdom for medicines uh, so med medicines the 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 profession of uh, you know the doctors and all it is a reflection of god only right so there's nothing wrong with taking medicines or if god is showing a couple okay you you've tried for whatever reason it's not happening you go the medical way I don't see anything wrong with that, uh, but yeah, you know, you could think about it, and if you have a difference of opinion, that's fine too. So, sure. sure. okay, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, thank you, Susan. Uh, okay, uh, I saw um, Say's hand go up first, so <laughs> Say. Oh, so I, I was just going to quickly um, comment uh, that um, whatever decision we're going to take, uh, as long as the Holy Spirit is in tune with us, I think that's what's most important. Uh, for some people, the Holy Spirit can direct them to go ahead with IVF. Some, for some, the Holy Spirit will instruct them to hold on. You know, I think we just need to be open to the direction of the Holy Spirit and understand, just like you mentioned that. Uh, God is the giver of all wisdom. The medical, whatever advances we've seen in the medical field, if God never allowed such wisdom, they would never have seen those things. At the same time, too, medicine has its limits, and God also has His power to show forth that look, I am still greater than medicine. So, all in all, let's just be directed by the Spirit. Whatever decisions we end up taking, that's all I'll just add. Yeah. Sure, say I agree with that. Yeah, thank you. So be led by the Spirit. Class, we'll just take few minutes and uh, close off. Um, uh, okay, Prabhakar, you you have a question? Uh, uh, no, Pastor, I have a testimony based on this. I can share after yeah. the break. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, sure. fine. You can share after the break. That's okay. All right. Um, and Shri Kumar says. Uh, we should not take god's word and prophecy lightly we have to hold on to it and face every obstacle yeah true shri kumar so we are saying the same thing uh and like if you are pointing to that ivf example uh then again you know as say said being led by the lord no pastor it's about uh, what you discussed no not about ivf thank you ivf okay <laughs> okay sure, sure sure yeah thank you thank you understood All right, we agree with that too. Shri Kumar and Beth um, says, uh, "Yeah, she agrees with Sai." And when we are not sure, just keep pushing until something opens. Mary and Joseph had no idea which door would open, so they knocked on all. Mm, uh, while but while knocking, be assured in our heart, God will open the right one and not get stressed. Yes, uh, sure, Beth. Yeah, we do agree with that as well. Okay, so uh, on that positive. note of agreement let's go for a break and uh, we will be back to continue uh yeah see you at um, 1105 thank you